The Appalachian language is full of interesting and unusual sometimes <laughs> phrases, words, and word usages. Today I'm going to share a few of them with you. I'm going to start with bad to. So here's the dictionary entry from the uh, bad to in the dictionary of Smoky Mountain English. So bad to is an adjective phrase, having an unfortunate, undesirable, or excessive habit, inclination, or weakness for doing something. It, and usually the term um, represents a, like a negative connotation, but it can be positive. So here, first here's some um, examples. 1904, the Capehart Notebooks. He used to be bad to drink, but he's kind of tapered off. 1956, Hall Collection, Roaring Fort, Tennessee. People was pretty bad to stay all night with each other and tell stories. That was James Husky. Um, another one, he wasn't too bad to grumble. Grandmother was awful bad to take the sick headache. 1976, uh, Lindsay Grassy Bald. Yeah, bears were bad to kill sheep, but not so bad to kill the hogs. 1991, Haynes Haywood Home, Shiloh, which was a horse, was bad to shy and run away at the drop of a hat. Black gum trees were bad to go hollow if they got to be any size, and they were most often used to make bee trees. So the interesting thing, though, about bad to, which is still really common in my area of Appalachia and including in my household, the usage of that, is that it can be used in a negative way. So I might say, he's bad to drink, or he's really bad on drugs, I heard. And I'm, you know, it's sad, he's really bad on drugs. But then I might turn around and use it in a positive light. Like I might say, Granny's really bad to crochet, which is really a good thing that she crochets. Or I might say, the deer hunter's really bad to hunt which is still the positive. So that's an interesting one about bad to, that it could be used in a negative way or in a positive way. I would say most often probably in a negative way, but, but I don't know, pretty even, I guess. So another one, this is just a word, but it's kind of some different usages that we use. So take, the word take, just makes it basically means, you know, the most common definition is you take hold of something, if you take it. But here's some other usages in Appalachia. So we take a fit. When she found out he bought that car without asking, she took a fit. Why she carried on so, I thought that he was going to go try to get his money back. So there's your good one. We we'll use it as take after. So take after means like looks or acts like. So I would say uh, chatter, or I would say chitter, Katie. Uh, it really takes after the Presleys. It's funny. She takes after the Presleys, I think, in her attitude. <laughs> But she looks, she takes after the Wiltsons. I think she looks like a Wilson up one side and down the other. And it's funny because Corey and Katie are twins, Chitter and Chatter on the blog, uh, and people can't tell them apart. But it's funny, when I see Corey uh, Chatter on the blog, when I see Corey, I see the Presleys. I see Matt, uh, her father, and her grandmother, Miss Cindy. That's who I see. When I see Katie, I see the Wiltsons. Even though people can't tell them apart, I see totally two totally different things. So that's just interesting. That's common, though, for all of us. Um, like, uh, going back to Corey again, I remember Pap thought that she, like, I, from when Corey was real little, I thought she looked just like Miss Cindy and, and her daddy, who was really similar, you know, really looked like them. But Pap always thought that he, that she looked like his big grandma, which was my great-grandmother, and I can barely remember. She died when I was five. But it's interesting, a lady that lives down the road, well, she's passed away now, but that lived down the road, Zelma, when she first seen Corey and Katie, she told uh, Pap, she said, that one right there is the spitting image of Carrie. So she thought the same thing. She seen the uh, Corey as a little girl and thought she looked just like uh, Pap's grandmother, which is just interesting how we all see something different in people. So another one, uh, take and. We'd say take and. So I might say take and wash the dirt off those taters so I can get them on for supper. Or he took to drinking right after his wife died. So it just means to start, take and. So take and those taters, like I said, and peel them. And like, let's get started. Let's get started with supper. Take a notion to decide. That's a good one. So um, take a notion is usually when you're being spontaneous. Like I just took a notion and got in the car and drove over to Franklin and visited some of those stores. I ain't been over in, in so long. I couldn't believe how Franklin's grew up. So uh, take a notion. Take off. If you take off, you run or leave. So um, one time I took off and nobody knew where I was at and everybody's worried about me, something like that. Or he took off to Florida and said he didn't know if he's ever coming back. Um, or he took off running so fast that his legs had hardly worked when he saw that bear in the woods. Uh, I like this one, take a shine. 
that means you begin to like somebody or you begin to like something. So I always said uh, I took a shine to the deer hunter or to Matt the first time I ever laid eyes on him. If you take sick, you can take sick. It just means you got sick. So he took sick and left right after dinner. He didn't even get to eat dinner with us. He just got sick and had to leave. Or he took sick and went to bed and he hadn't got up since. I'm worried about him. Uh, take hold. So I told him all he needed to do was take hold of that mess and make it work. I knowed he'd come out on top if he did. So take hold is just to kind of take ownership of something. Uh, take the baby. If you take the baby, that means you had a C-section. I had Corey and Katie both. We had to take the baby. The doctor did take the babies. I had to have a C-section because it wasn't, things weren't working. Um, take in is another form of start. I don't hear this one as much, and if I do, it's from really older older folks. So they might, might say something like, school always took in at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., I guess. School always took in at 7 a.m. I mean, sorry, 8 a.m. when I was going. Now it's closer to 8.30 before they take in. Uh, take up to join. She's took up with that little old boy from Andrews, and I reckon they're going to get married probably. Uh, take, su succeed, or establish. So I tried starting some running cedar on the bank behind the house, but it never did take. I know a lot of people try to replant their ramps and try to get them to grow, and usually they don't take. I think it's because they have to be at the right elevation. I might be wrong about that, but... Um, take could also mean right. So uh, you call them out, and I'll take them down. That's a good one. Taken. If you get taken, that means you got deceived. Somebody really fooled you. So that's an interesting one. So those are just really various uses of the words take that are used in Appalachia. And most of those are still really common today. Another good one is to stub up. So if you stub up, um, it means you become sullen or you're, you're stubborn. You're being stubborn is what you're being. So uh, chatter... Corey, going back to Corey, she was this is the sweetest girl I ever seen. She still is sweet, but when she was little, she was especially, I would tell her, you have a special gift, and it's a gift of being sweet. Um, it's funny, one time I found her crying in her little toddler bed, and I said, oh my gosh, what's wrong? Did you get hurt? What's wrong? And she said, no, Mama, I think I'm losing my sweet gift because I've been mean to Katie. I said, well, honey, just because you're mean don't mean you, that you've lost your sweet gift. We're all mean. But anyway, even though she had that sweet, sweet gift, she could stub up like nobody I ever seen in my life. If she got her mind set on something, there was no dissuading her, no changing her mind about any of it. Uh, that you just couldn't change your mind. Uh, when Pap, another one that goes along with being stubbed up, when I was young, Pap would tell me, and he probably told Corey that some too, don't be so, don't quit stubbing up and don't be so touch us. So touch us is another good word. Uh, touch us just means you're, um, what's another word for it? See, I get, they're so ingrained in me that it's hard for me to think of another way of saying it. But if you're touch us about something, maybe you're a little prickly or uh, have a little bad attitude. If somebody says something to you and you're, you're kind of being spoiled or pouty about something, that's being touch us. Uh, another one is uh, body, which is a, fun, a neat one that you'll hear. Um, people talk about in reference to their self. So it's got to where a body can't even go to the store without locking their door. That's one that you'll hear. I think that's an interesting uh, usage. And um, Joseph Hall, who was a big um, part of the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English, he, he didn't compile it, Michael Montgomery did, but he was his all of his research was used in the dictionary and he observed that in the 1930s even. Um, the, the combining the form body is more prevalent than one to form in, indefinite pronouns, thus anybody, everybody, and somebody. Now, there's some more grammar for you. But that is still common today. So here's uh, some other examples from the dictionary. 1895, Edson and Fairchild, Tennessee Mountains. A body can't get along here. See, that's still a common one that I would hear today. Uh, a body can't get room to breathe here no more. There's so many people moving in. 1924, spring, Lydia Whaley. To know when soap is finished, you cool it till a body can keep a finger in it. So she's saying until you can still stick a finger in it, but uh, that's how you know it's ready. 1937, Hall Collection, Upper Cros Cosby Creek, Tennessee. Fever weed breaks the fever on a body. Vinnie Ramsey said that. 1939, Hall Collection, One Arm Jim is right feeble. I reckon a body will find him dead somewheres. Uh oh, that sounds bad for one arm Jim. 1940, Hans uh, Hawks Dunn. There wasn't anything a body could say to Berisha that would do him any good. 
1962, Dykeman, Tall Woman. If you've never read that book, it's a great one. When I brushed his hair just right, a body would hardly notice. 1969, a body thought about it back then. 1989, Smith, Flying Bullets, a body never knowed when they just might come in the middle of the night. Delilah said, and drag you out of your bed and take you out to kill you for no reason at all. That's pretty scary. 1997, Montgomery Collection. Could a body buy that there dog? How can a body live on such piddlings? Um, so th that one's still fairly common today. It's got to, like I just keep thinking of that one, it's got to where a body can't do this or uh, a body can barely keep their family fed these days or works hard to come by, those kind of things. That one's still fairly common. Uh, fairly common in Appalachia. Another interesting phrase is ever when. That's one of those that I didn't realize was unusual until I read it in the dictionary Smoky Out in English and then I thought everybody doesn't say ever when. So here's the entry for ever when from the dictionary. It's a conjunction. When, whenever, at the time, or moment that, same as everin, I've not heard everin, or whenever. So 1929, ever when you get to dosing up on them pison pills this here young whippersnapper of a sawmill doctor gives you, your like is not to wake, wake up a laying in a coffin. So I guess that was somebody didn't believe in modern medicine at all. 1939, Hall Collection, Cataloochee, North Carolina. They run the bear off, I guess for a half a mile before they got it with it, up with it and treat it. Ever when we got there, Jack reached for his gun and that was Steve Woody. 1942, Chase, Jack Tales. I love Jack Tales. Uh, Pap used to tell them to Paul, and I think he told them to Steve too, but he ne I never remember him telling them to me. I don't know why, but I really like Jack Tales. This is a, a good part of this one. Well, Daddy, says Jack, just as soon as I can find a place to catch a hold, I'm going to take the creek back up there closer to the house where your old woman can get her water ever when she wants it. 1976, Dumas, Smoky Mountain Speech. I'll name it whenever, ever when you say. I'll name it ever when you say. Um, that, that name it reminds me of, there's a, people, some people say only one person that I know. I've seen it documented in the dictionary and other places, but only one person that I know, real sweet lady, says name it to me. Instead of mention, she'll say name it to me. Like I might say, um, did she tell you that she wouldn't be here for the rest of the day? And she'll say, no, she didn't name it to me. So that's an interesting one that that part reminded me of. I'll name it ever when you say. Anyway, ever when. I couldn't imagine life without ever when. I say it. That's just what I say. Ever when uh, the bread gets done, we'll eat dinner. Ever when you get that finished up, we'll go on down and see Granny. Um, I don't know. It's just part of my life. So I'll be interested to see. Please comment and see if you're com if you're familiar with ever when and if you use it or maybe if you've just heard the usage. That's a really interesting one. Another one that I didn't really think about until um, probably, I don't know, three or four years ago, a lady that I worked with, it was the, the word say. So a lady that I worked with, she said, you know, I've been seeing your vocabulary test and the way you talk about uh, Appalachian language, and I just wanted to ask you if you're familiar with one that I know. She said, my daddy grew up in West Virginia, even though I was raised in Florida. That's where he was raised. And she said, we all think it's so funny that he says say. And I said, what do you mean it's funny that he says say? How does he use it? And she said, oh, you know, when he asks us a question and nobody answers us, he'll say say. I said, and you think that's unusual? And she's like, well, yeah, it's weird. I've never heard anybody else say it. And I said, well, you just haven't been around me long enough because I say it. So, for example, I might say to the family, I might say, I was thinking about making chicken and dumplings for supper. How does that sound? And silence. Nobody says a word. And then I say, say like I want them to answer me. So that's how I use the word say. So that's another interesting one I'll be able, uh, be interested to see. Leave a comment if you're familiar with that usage of the word say. Appalachian language is one of the things that's just dear to my heart. I love it. I love to talk about it, as you can probably tell. Uh, so I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you'll share it with your friends and neighbors, but mostly I just hope you'll drop back by often as I celebrate Appalachia.